I was the first person in my unit to get shot, to ever get a Purple Heart. They didn't know what to do with me. I fell through a lot of cracks. I call it outrunning the crazy. Um, I have been traveling. I've tried antidepressants, uh, certain things to help me sleep, talk therapy, group therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy, vibrational healing, acupuncture, uh, equine therapy. I use my dogs as therapy. You know, you hear it and feel it all at the same time. So I, I knew I was hit. They, they teach us if you feel pain, that's good, because you know you're alive. So I was relieved. I was angry, but I was also relieved. Major Autry yelled over, is everybody okay? And I'm like, they shot my fucking thumb off. And he's like, what? And I said it again, and those were the first words out of my mouth. I was assigned to the combat camera squadron. I would say it's a challenge to stay in focus and have decent audio when people are shooting at you. <laughs> Anything that ever happened to me is coming out now. Anything that I ever kept in, stuffed down, repressed, it's all coming out. Recently I have gone back to drawing. It's a way of slowing down. I went in the military because I longed for a sense of structure. I had lost my sister and I was splitting up with my husband. And then because I was in a vulnerable state, I became victimized by a sexual predator uh, while I was in training. I wasn't raped. I was you know, sexually assaulted by another female in the shower and she stalked and harassed me for quite some time and I never dealt with it. They didn't do anything, really. They didn't give me any counseling. And you know, I had some things happen to me as a child that were similar, you know, with a neighbor being inappropriate with me when I was 10 years old. So I've had things, you know, my father leaving, my sister dying, being assaulted. It wasn't just um, getting shot. Things that never bothered me before are like intolerable now. I cannot filter out all the senses, like all the noises and smells, sounds and vibrations coming at me. Sometimes on days I have to wear earplugs in my own house. I solve the problem of being triggered by isolating, but then it creates another set of problems. I have no connections with people. I don't feel like I belong to anything. I'm not part of anything. I have no purpose. I don't function. So it's an a uncomfortable place to be. I had what they, the, 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 the care providers considered ide um, suicidal ideation. If only you would talk to me. I'm still a bit in denial about it. I call it a loss of hope. I wouldn't be all by myself. But last year I got to a point where I looked at a bottle of pills and dumped them out to get one. And then I looked at them, I'm like, well, that wouldn't do it. You know, as if would this amount of pills kill me? Self cry. <laughs> oh, that's what I do all day. I know there's people out there who are suffering more than I am, people who have had it worse, that have worse injuries. I don't want to seem ungrateful. I'm grateful to be alive. But I'm kinda I'm kinda in this nether world, this limbo. I'm kinda stuck. I was a very capable person before. My symptoms started emerging and I took care of myself. I don't want who I am now to be the end of the story.